let's just take a minute and appreciate these waves. We've definitely got some rollers out here, some chop. Now it's not too crazy today, but it is the perfect day to talk about boat handling in rough seas. Today we really want to cover boat handling in rough seas. I didn't want to do it. I've literally been waiting for the perfect day to do this. I didn't want to do it on a day where it would be so rough that I could hardly film. <laughs> and then I didn't want to do it where it was so calm where there was no practical knowledge actually happening. So a day like today I thought would be absolutely perfect. We have rough seas. Having these skills will help you, but it's not so rough where I can't film and it's not so calm where you guys can't visually see what's going on. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. running up seat, down seat, side seat, and lastly, a little trick we call quartering. So we're actually going down seat right now. Down seat is the calmest, nicest way. That's why whenever we're filming and it's a little rough, we'll turn the boat down seat, take the camera out. Hey, it's a good time to film. So Amanda, why don't you show them how we're down seat? All right. What down seat means is that the waves are coming at our transom. So if you look right here, you see the waves breaking at our transom. The waves are traveling this way, so we're traveling in the same direction as the waves. You see here's the wave, they pick up and they break. They pick up and they break. So we're traveling in the same direction as the waves. That's what down seat means. Basically what the boat is doing is it's surfing the waves. When you're going down sea at an idle speed, there's really not much to worry about. I got the boat pretty much just in gear, a little bit past idle and we're cruising and it's nice and comfortable. We're actually not getting wet, but if we turn this boat around, we would definitely get wet at this speed. However, what if we want to go fast? How do we drive down sea? The number one thing that I will tell you is bring the bow up and how we're going to do that is with trim tabs. So we're going to take the trim tabs and we're going to get the bow up. So here are my trim tabs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold them. Can you see this okay, Amanda? Yep, I can see it. I'm going to hold them down like this and that bow is going to come up. You want your bow all the way up, as high up as you can when traveling down sea. You don't want to put your trim tabs down because that's going to force your, the bow of your boat to nosedive into the waves and that's dangerous. So if we didn't have the bow up and we were running down sea, the bow, if you think about it, the boat will be maybe a little bit like this and we're going with the waves. So what you're going to do is you're going to stuff your bow because it's like we're going down a wave and the boat's down, boom! and that's gonna keep happening over and over again. And that's very uncomfortable. So you want the bow up so that way the waves are pushing you down, but the boat's a little bit higher. So that way, by the time you come off of a wave and onto the next one, the bow is up to catch the next wave. Let's say the waves are massive, okay? Guys, you don't wanna be riding the front of a wave because it's, that is definitely gonna push your you bow. You don't wanna surf. No surfing, we're not surfing here, guys. So what we wanna do is let's say my arm is a wave and this is the boat. You want to be riding the back of the wave until that wave dies and then you want to get on the next one and ride it until it dies and that's going to kind of determine the speed that you run at if you're running too fast you're going to ride over a wave into the next one and you're just going to nose that and you're going to continue to do that you want to ride the backs of those waves constantly so it's naturally keeping the boat up in a comfortable position if the waves aren't too big then you can probably run on play plane keep the bow up and you won't have to worry too much but guys a lot of this depends on the size of the boat you have the type of the boat you have and the size of the wave basically to sum that up if you have very very large waves you need to stay on the back of the wave you don't want to get ahead of the wave and surf it the other thing to think about is how fast you go so when you're traveling down sea you can travel as fast as you want comfortably which is going to depend on your boat size as long as you're bow the boat isn't diving into the waves in front of you you're okay that's the best rule of thumb i could think of let's put this into action you guys saw me trim my bow so it's going to come all the way up i'm going to get on plane and i'm going to find that comfortable running speed and i'll let you know what it is for a 32 intrepid i would say we have two to three foot seas out here right now and i'm going to be going with the waves all right here we go ready amanda yep
make about down C is to always be adjusting the speed of your throttles. So always keep your hand on the throttle so you can adjust the speed and your hand on the wheel. For example, if you're on the back of a wave and the wave is starting to go faster than you and you're drifting behind and that wave, that next wave is about to come over you, speed up, stay on the back of that wave. The opposite will happen is if you're going faster than the wave and then you're about to fly off of it, slow down. Stay on the back of the wave, guys. So just constantly adjust it. And this is really important when you get in the rougher seas that are nice big rollers and for running into inlets. The next sea condition we are going to cover is traveling up sea. But before we can go up sea, we have to turn around. So I'm gonna give you a little tip on when to turn around in rough seas. Now on a day like today, I could probably turn around at any point and not worry about it. My favorite point to turn around is if I'm traveling down sea and I'm switching to up sea. I wait till I one wave just finishes. So I'm riding a wave right now. All right, that wave, hold on, I'm, I just caught another one. I'm gonna get this, don't worry. All right. So I'm riding a wave, I'm riding a wave, that wave finished, you want to make up. your turn. She sped up, she got more aggressive. And I sped up to make my turn before that next set. And depending on the seas you're in, now if you are in extremely rough seas and swells, there might be swells, so you kind of maybe ride a couple of them, okay there's an opening, make your turn. And you want to make that turn right when you're at the bottom of that wave. You don't want to make your turn at the top of the wave, you want to make it when that wave is done, when it's settling down, that's when you make your turn. Now we're up sea. Traveling up sea. Now when we're traveling up sea, if the waves are really tight together and stacked, sometimes it's better to go faster, get on top of those waves, and you'll just stay on top of them and you will stay dry. Now that's gonna depend on the size of your boat and the size of the seas. But when they're tight and they're rough, normally going faster will help. So if you're going slow and it doesn't look that rough and you're getting wet, hmm, maybe I should try going a little faster and get up on top of these waves. Now something else that helps, when the seas are really tight like that and you're on top of them, but if your bow is constantly doing this and porpoising and pounding, take your trim tabs, push them down just a little bit and that'll get your bow straight and you can just ride on top of the waves. That is one thing if you're in seas and you're constantly doing this and they're tight. Take your trim tabs, push them down and it'll push you through those seas better. Now if you have really, really spread out up sea, that's when you're really gonna wanna be on the throttles. So the waves are coming at me, okay? So a wave just finished and I'm going up that wave. But let's say for some reason, so the wave's at me, and now all of a sudden I'm traveling down that wave and I'm going fast and I see another wave, it's about to come over my bow. When that happens, you wanna back off the throttle. This way you slow down, that wave can come and you can get back on top of it. So that's basically the advice for going up sea is you wanna be on and off the throttles at all times. And if you're in very large waves, you wanna go straight. If you start turning sideways in the middle of coming down the back of a really big wave, that's when things get hairy. We want to go up, come down nice and clean, and stay on the throttles. Don't be afraid to adjust your throttles. If you're traveling, all of a sudden you feel like you caught some air, that means it's time to come off the throttles. <laughs> if you guys look, you can see that clearly we're going up sea right now. The waves are coming at us, the spray is coming at us. Rough sea would definitely be the less preferable of the two. But you see those white caps out there, those rollers coming towards us. And if we turn around, hold on, we're gonna ride this wave for a second. There we go, going through the waves. If we turn around, you'll see it looks calm behind us. It looks pretty nice. That's because what we're staring at is the backs of all the waves. They're all going away and we're saying bye to them. Amanda's about to demonstrate too slow, and I'm about to get soaking wet, and this is what we do for you all. Here we go. Too slow. Oh boy, getting wet. Just took a wave.
Okay, how wet are you? Don't dry yourself off. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty wet, guys. You can see. Look at my hair. Look, look at your hair, you're dripping. The things we do for you, the tube. Things we do for the tube. Do it for the tube. Uh, okay, you ready? Yeah. Let's, let's, please, let's please show them how to stay dry. So <laughs> We're gonna go up sea a little bit faster at the perfect speed. Okay, I have faith in Amanda. I'm gonna stand up here now, which is gonna go the perfect speed to stay on top of the waves and not get wet. You can see I'm pretty wet. Maybe I should dry my glasses so you guys can see. Here we go. About to go the perfect speed. So that way we don't get wet. Look at this. We're on plane. And I'm not getting wet anymore. reference when I was going up sea and I was going seven knots um, Emily was getting soaked when I was going up sea and I went 15 knots I was going fast enough to get on top of the waves and stay on top of them and Emily stayed dry now that time I didn't touch my trim tabs at all my bow was completely up but sometimes if the seas are really tight it's better to trim them down but today wasn't the day for that the next type of sea conditions that you might find yourself traveling in would be side sea side sea in my opinion is the worst because you are gonna be taking water over the side and there's no way to hide from it. So I'm about to go side sea for you guys. And that's when the boat is going to rock like this. It's not very fun and it's not very dry, that's for sure. Ideally, you don't want to travel side sea. I'll get you a visual. You can see the waves are coming at the side of our boat. Usually, you don't want to travel side sea unless you have to. But if you do have to, we're going to give you a trick on how to do it. If you're traveling side sea and you're ready to go somewhere and you want to pick up some speed, the ideal way to travel side sea is to find that trough. The trough is the bottom part of the waves and you want to stay within it. So if you're traveling the waves are coming this way, right guys? And I'm traveling this way. I'm gonna stay in that lower part of the waves the whole way. So I might have to do a little bit of zigzagging, but it's better, better than being sightseeing and going up a wave, down a wave, up a wave, down a wave. So you wanna stay in that lower column of the wave. The last concept I wanna cover is quartering. Think of a quarter, 25 cents, but it's a verb and we're now doing it on a boat. When you quarter a sea, instead of traveling directly into it, or I have a following sea right now, so that means I'm traveling straight into it. Quartering means I'm traveling at a 25 degree angle of the sea. What that does, it allows my boat to travel faster without burying that bow, because I'm not going straight into the seas. It's basically giving you more space between the end of one wave and the start of other, allowing you to travel a faster distance and hopefully a smoother ride. But just remember, if my destination is directly in front of me, and I quarter my C's. I might end up out here, but what you can do is you can quarter your C's in one direction and then quarter your C's in the other to get to your destination, hopefully more comfortably. That pretty much sums up quite a variety of different sea conditions and we hope these tips were helpful. We are about to head into our inlet. I'm not sure what our inlet looks like right now. Hopefully we can use some of these skills that we it's taught you. It's definitely gonna be somewhat of a down sea side sea. It'll probably be a down sea side sea inlet. It's not gonna be too crazy, but I'm gonna use these skills that we taught you in a real world example going into our inlet. We made it into the inlet. Thankfully today, the inlet, it really didn't have big swells that I needed to ride in. It was actually really choppy and short waves today. So sometimes those are inlet days where you just gotta kinda go straight through them. And that was what today was. It wasn't these big swells that I had to worry about. So that was good. Thankfully, an easy inlet today. Um, we hope you guys learned something and enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it in the comments and let us know. We appreciate you all for following and make sure, thanks for watching. 
I have fish brain. It's been a long day. You saw those rough seas out there. My brain hurts. Thank you for following and make sure, thank you for watching and make sure you follow Gale Force Twins on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok.